I'm not a very social person, so I didn't think, you know, social distancing would be hard for me because my fairy family is very close knit. So just being at home with them was like a great opportunity and it felt good to be home. But then like, it was a lot more difficult than I thought it would be because I had to do the entire art process on my own. And just like the entire process of, okay, I have to take, I literally have to take my education into my own hands at this point. It was really difficult because uh, a lot of my classes as a senior were communication based. So the assignments were a lot harder to complete because of that they couldn't reflect that communication in a way that would be the easiest for seniors. And it was also really difficult because that's this, these last few months of school would have been where the senior traditions would have been the most. And so it was, it was definitely a bummer to keep going with school and not be sad about missing out on those senior year traditions. So yeah, it was, it was hard. It was difficult. The staff suggested to me, in as much as we weren't able to continue having groups and busfuls of students come to the high school show, that we give students K-12 ages to, an opportunity to express their concerns, their fears, the changes in their lives. I felt like the way the work that we exhibited through this show really gave a perspective and a voice to the students and we could really understand what they were going through, how how anxious they were about what was gonna happen, the optimism of some of the students, the, the heartbreak of others, the worry about their families. And then again, just to document the students' experiences as, as a museum, we're, we're historians too, and we wanna document history. And I think this um, 20, 30 years from now is gonna be such important primary source material for people looking back at what was it like for school children in Utah during the pandemic? And these, these artworks and their artist statements will really give good insight for that. I was trying to show firsthand what the graduates of 2020 were feeling. You know, people were really sympathetic. I, just reading online and seeing people in posts about how bad they were feeling about the class of 2020. And the message I was trying to convey was how we feel, you know, being at home, just getting our diploma online, even if we didn't get our diploma necessarily online, we had to complete those classes online and having to finish our learning without any of our classmates or anything. Uh, I just wanted to show the true emotion that we were feeling and how sad we were that our senior year was cut short and that it it's sad but it's a reality and I I'm, when I posted it I said um, I'm, I'm sad but I'm happy my friends and family are healthy and that's how I do feel I'm glad that we were able a lot of kids were able to avoid getting sick by being quarantined and that's the most important part so with the piece I wanted to create something that I've always been fascinated with the idea of, you know, really long hair because I just think it's such like a dedication and everything. And so, you know, going through these ideas of like self quarantining, I just kind of thought about the idea of like, watching someone's hair grow is a way of seeing the passage of time. And so how like these couple of past these past months have felt like forever they felt like my hair grew out to the floor and drug around behind me kind of like that was a part of who i was i'm sitting at home on my couch playing my nintendo switch and my hair is everywhere you know um so that was kind of the idea behind that was my hair being a way of telling like i've been sitting here forever one of the things that I incorporate into my art a lot is this figure that is in the image. Um, one of the things I struggle a lot with is gender identity, expression of self, and also connection with my cultural roots. Um, it's really hard to understand, you know, the gender roles in a society that's almost gone, a society that has been 
you know, almost completely destroyed. So, you know, I created this figure in which red is a sacred color in traditional Assiniboine culture. It's a traditional, uh, it's a very, very sacred color. So uh, I wrapped red cloth around, you know, the groin area of the figure as a way of almost, you know, just kind of like putting it in this gender neutral space. Even though I feel as though sometimes I do project myself a lot onto this figure, you know, this figure is me in like this visual context in this, you know, sort of like what I'm trying to get across, but as well as like it being um, neutral enough that other people can put their perspective on it. I think everyone has learned to appreciate school and what it means and actually going to school. So I, it's given me a major appreciation for that and for my family, you know, spending so much time with them in quarantine. It was actually really special for me. Uh, just being able to spend that time and be healthy and help our community with staying safe and preventing the spread. You know, it's, it's okay that we had to sacrifice our senior year to be able to go to school in the next fall. And that's what I was really focusing on. I don't feel like anything has stayed the same. I think my plans for life have changed completely since the beginning of the pandemic. And everything has just shifted and it's like in a, shifted in a good way, you know? I think that I've learned through the pandemic that I'm stronger than I think I am, which is weird because my entire life, I feel like that's something that's like been my family's mantra, um, sort of, is that like, you can do things that are difficult. You can do things that are hard. And to a certain degree, I always believed that, but I think it really took a global pandemic for me to truly understand like what that meant to me as like an individual. Um, because this has been hard. This has been a hard thing to go through, um, especially because it feels like for a while there, like I did have to do it by myself, even though I had family around me, it was something that I had to go through. Like I had my own struggles that I had to deal with. Um, and I think I've also learned more about myself. I've learned um, who I am. If I were to redo this piece that I did originally for the Springfield um, online art exhibition for the high school, for, you know, um, about the COVID-19 pandemic, I think I've come to a place with my body image and my self image that I would want it to be a series of portraits, photographs um, that have been modified digitally to be similar to the the sculpture itself. I love the sculpture and I love like the format that I can just display it, but I think, you know, I kind of was like, oh, this is just anybody, when it really felt like it was me. And so I think because I've come to grips with my identity and with my body and with who I am unapologetically, I would want it to be me. So whether that's a painting or another sculpture, I wanted to want it to look more like me. It's weird how when I was younger, I used to love powwows. And then during the pandemic, it felt like I fell out of love with them. And now that I've accepted who I am identity wise, I think it's, I think it's going to make it easier. And so that is what I'm most excited about is seeing my people again.